I was thinking about Brother Ricky having to put up Miss Leslie. Miss Leslie got to put up Brother Ricky. Now I was thinking about me and my wife. And I said, oh, no. And me and her both just been married one time. We married each other. But she's really and truly been married to a few individuals. One of them was the undertaker. That was me. I picked up a few. You die out here tonight, I'll pick you up and haul y'all. Hey, Amen. She's married to the milkman. I used to carry milk. She even married to the to the newspaper boy. I used to do that. Brother Dean loves this. Oh, yeah. Even the garbotologist. You should drive a garbage truck. Jack all trades. This got a steering wheel. I know how to handle it, amen. <laughs> I try to be professional in every sense of the word, by the way. I mean, the only way you can say you're professional is when you retire and lay the keys on the table, amen. <laughs> right now, at present time, she's married to the mailman. <laughs> I try to carry the mail six days a week and preach on Sunday. I guess you can say I carry the mail seven days a week, Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad he's mine, and I'm glad I'm his. I'm glad he loves me, and I love him. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. God be in our help if we can put this together. It'll be a truly be a miracle. I'll tell you, I, my study, my wife will testify to this. looks like a bomb went off in it. I lose my train of thought, and I got notes everywhere. And uh, I don't know what even wrote on them, what they're there for, anything else. But I, I try to clean up once in a while. She'll take the trash out. I said, don't touch nothing else, amen. And uh, I tell you, I just try and discern where to go and what to do and how to do, amen. Try to be a help and a blessing to you. I tell you, y'all, y'all quality people put up with me. I, I appreciate that. Mount Pisgah, I want to tell you tonight, I appreciate you. Uh, putting up with me, amen. I, it's a mutual affair, though. I put up with them. They put up with me, amen. But uh, I tell you, they just something about being a little seven years, brother. God just sort of put us together. Uh, and I tell you, wouldn't trade nothing for it. And uh, we was blessed to take on some more missionaries, brother. We took on more missionaries. Our offerings went up. Uh, and such a blessing to be able to do that. We don't take that lightly or take it for granted or anything like that. And uh, just try to. Always be mindful. Uh, what Brother Dean told me, Brother uh, or Brother Larry said about Brother Dean, he said he's a type fella that can win a man off a bar stool, and I agree with that, amen. I tell you, anybody, uh, uh, Brother Dean uh, is just special, amen. amen. I, I went to visit him when he was in the hospital, and uh, I guess I'm on. I guess so. Well, maybe I ain't. Maybe I would be. Come in. Brother Jake, now we're good. He got me thumbs up back there. I don't need that, amen. Went to see Brother Dean in the hospital, and I thought about that after I seen Brother Dean. Ain't nobody ought to wear one of them robes that you got to put on. <laughs> ain't nobody. They, they ain't for Christian people. They just ain't. Gives a whole new meaning to I see you, amen. <laughs> yeah, you get that. Amen, hallelujah. I tell you, I don't know the rest of the direction to go, but I'm going to go this direction. I believe the Lord will help me, amen. I want to look at the latter part of chapter number four in the book of Mark. We'll be in chapter number five. And, and the four synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they, they never contradict each other, but they do complement each other. And you can go to the book of Mark, chapter number eight, and get to, uh, and get to just of some of this we'll hear in, uh, or in Luke, rather, uh, chapter 8, uh, goes right along with Mark, chapter 5, uh, and also it's in the book of Matthew. But uh, I want to look at that last verse in Mark chapter 4. And he said in the Scripture there, he said, 
And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind of the sea obey him? What caliber of man is that? You know who he's speaking about. He's speaking out the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Yes. Uh, just try to think about this tonight, sort of along this line, about home going. About the sweetest place you've ever been is a place called home. I want to dig into the scripture here just for a minute in the verse number one of chapter number five. He said, and they came over unto the other side of the sea unto the country of Gadareans. And when they was come out of the ship immediately, uh, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. And who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and and the chains he had plucked asunder, him and the fetters broke in pieces, and neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountain and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Father, love you. Thank you so much for the blessing. Thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit we feel here tonight. Lord, for the great liberty we had this week. And Father, for the many blessings that's come our way. We don't take them for granted. And we give all honor and praise unto uh, you. And Father, we do pray that you'd, uh, Lord, deal with the hearts here tonight. That those need reviving. Those need uh, uh, a touch of thee. Father, I pray you'd give that special touch. And that when it's lost might see thee as Lord and Savior. And come to your saving knowledge before it's everlasting and eternally too late. In Jesus' precious name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Looking in our scripture, and we'll just highlight down through here in chapter number 5. And we'll share some things with you. I hope to be a help to you. Uh, I've got notes everywhere, and I don't know if I got, I ain't got them organized. And I, uh, if you'll just bear with me, we'll try to see what happens here tonight. Uh, but I thought about this in this verse of scripture here, and it's talking about that demon possessed man uh, cutting himself and running through the tombs, and uh, he's a mental case. Now, in saying that, uh, if you know somebody that's got mental problems, don't take that lightly. Uh, that is a very serious thing. And people are in that frame of mind sometimes. Uh, but God can help them, amen. He said in verse number 7, And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou son of the most high God, and adjourn thou my God, that thou tormentest me not. Notice what he said in verse number 8. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Let me continue to read on here just uh, so you get to just of what's happening here. And he said, And he uh, answered and said, My name is Legion, and we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there night unto the mountain, or nigh unto the mountain, and a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out, and it entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea, and they were about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. So now you sort of get to just the story of what's happening here. You've got a man that's crazy. He's got a mental condition, and he's running through the tombs, and he's cutting himself. 
And uh, I thought about this. Sometimes when people get out of the will of God, the devil affects the mind. Amen. And the devil works on the mind. You know, when you're, when you're little, before we get married and all that kind of stuff, when, when you're little, you've got to get older to get married and really should get older in what we do. But, but sometimes, I, you think about this, Brother Mike. Before you got married, you had no taxes. You had no rent. All the food you could eat, even though you're a vegetarian. <laughs> but you go off and get married. She's enough to drive you that way. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> she needs all the prayer we can give. But I thought about my grandmother today, and I the mental state that she got in, she was had Alzheimer's and she was losing her mind. I mean, I went over to check on her and I opened the, the bottom of the, uh, the cook stove up and the cat came out and I didn't know how long he'd been in there. And uh, I hate cats, but I ain't going to elaborate on that tonight. But, but she's losing her mind. My dad was taking turns with his sister, staying with her and trying to take care of her. And uh, we were constantly checking on her. And she got to where she couldn't drive. And she told dad one day, she says, I just want to go home. He says, Mom says, you're our home. This is home. Couldn't make her understand. She got real agitated. And uh, no matter how ridiculous it may seem, if you deal with somebody that's got Alzheimer's, just agree with them. It ain't worth the problems, amen. It ain't worth getting them upset over. But my grandmother, well, she just kept saying, I want to go home. So my dad didn't know what to do. He put her in a car and started driving her around. Well, he ended up taking her over to where she used to live. Of course, the place is dilapidated. You can just barely see a little bit of uh, the remnants of the house of where she was born and raised at and where she grew up. But she just kept saying she wanted to go home. And so my dad says, Mom says you're home. This, this is where you came from, but now you live over, over here on Collins Road. And tried to reason with her. And Dad was upset about it. And she was upset about it. When she got so bad, she, I never heard her sing like she sung right before she died. She would sing out of them redback hymnals. We'd minister to her on the bed of affliction in her last few days upon this earth. And, and she could sing those words without the songbook being open, and she never missed a word. Brother, I watched her. And how the Lord came in and took care of that. And I remember a man, I don't know if you know him or not, Brother Lance Carpenter, played a 12-string guitar, wrote songs, played gospel songs, uh, went all over the country. Brother Lance Carpenter went to the hospital to get some stitches out, and the nurse was talking to him and said, she had a man in there the other day, he said he was getting real agitated, he wanted to get out and wanted to was in such a big hurry and she asked him why he was so agitated and what his hurry was. He said, I got to get over to the rest home to feed my wife because she don't able to feed herself so I don't want her to not be fed. So he goes on about that and that lady shared this story with Brother Lance Carpenter. said, she can't remember me, but he said, I can remember her. I want to help her. Brother Lance thought about the story that was told to him by that nurse, and he goes on to write a song. That song says something like this. I might not remember him. I may lose my mind, and I might not ever remember the day I got saved. I might not know who my Spouse says, not, not know my children. 
but he will remember me. He will remember me. And Brother Lance wrote that song. And I thought about that and how precious that was that no matter what state of mind that we might could get in before we leave this world, if we're saved by the grace of God, He will remember me. He will remember you. Now go on in our story here tonight and we think about what was going on there. The demons, they couldn't live outside of uh, the man and they were requesting our verse number 11, verse number 12. We just hit the high spots here tonight uh, because the demons could not live outside of that body there. So they said, put us in the swine. And you know the story, we done read it to you. And the pigs, they go running down the hill violently. And they end up deviled ham. Hallelujah. But how wonderful it is. Martin Luther King said this. He said, I'm free. I'm free at last. I can only imagine what that man was, was like after he got saved. He wanted to be with the Lord and he, he desired to be with Him. And I'm sure he was a holler and something like that. I'm free. I'm free at last. But look at verse number 18. Let me read on down through here just for time's sake. We don't mean to take too much time tonight. I know it's been a, a busy week. But let's listen here to verse number 15. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legions. Notice this. He said, setting, clothed, and in his right mind. That's what happens when God moves in somebody. Amen. They and you, Amen. In his right mind, and they were afraid. He said, and they uh, that saw it told them how it befall to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. Notice what happens down there. The, the man wanted to stay with Jesus in verse number 18. Verse number 19, Jesus said, go home. Notice what he said there. He's like, Let's pick up verse 17. He said, and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. They were asking Jesus to leave town. Yeah. He wasn't even wanted in his own hometown. What a pitiful sight that is to ask the man of God that just done the miracle that was done there uh, to that man that was possessed of all those legions uh, there. That, look at verse number 19 or 18. He said, and when he had came unto the ship... He that had been possessed of the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to the family. Or to, excuse me, he said, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee and have had compassion upon thee. Ain't you glad you got a compassionate Savior? Ain't you got a, glad you got a Lord that can change the minds of those that are messed up? Amen. See, God can take the vilest of sinners and turn them around. Amen. Yes. He can take a, a, a drunkard out of the ditch and put new clothes on him and, and, and clean up his mouth and clean up his body and give him a haircut. You might not even know that man. That's it. I mean, I've seen that happen, amen. But we think about here tonight the man that had a home in a cemetery. We see that demonized home in the man. We see the people who didn't want Jesus to make a home. But when Jesus came by, the man got a home. The demons, they were deviled hands. So now it leads me on into the story, and I'm just hitting the high spots here tonight, and I really want to focus up on verse number 22. It's talking about Jairus' daughter. He said in verse number 22, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, Lay at the point of death. And I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she might be healed and she shall live. Notice what he said in verse number 
35. Let's back up to verse number 34. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole, go in peace, and be whole of the plague. And while he yet spake, there cometh forth the ruler of the synagogue, the house of certain, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troubles thou the master any further? Notice what he said here in verse number 36. As soon as Jesus heard the words that was spoken, it seemed like he put his foot in his mouth. And he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Only believe. So Jairus here could be considered in regard of one of the greatest fathers that's ever been. Yeah. Because he had concern for his daughter. He knew that he needed help. And where do you go to get help from? You go to get it from a Christ. I'd have walked that distance too, amen. Any man that won't take up for his babies, ain't much to him, amen. amen. You got to protect them babies. They're always your babies. Yeah. I mean, my baby's in their 30s, and they're still my baby. I told one the other day, I said, if I get a stick because I need to, I said, we'll take care of this. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't going to tell you which one said what. But they didn't like that too good, preacher. I told them they got married. If they didn't treat their spouse right, I'd come see them. Hey, Amen. I meant that. Yes. I yes. mean, you've got to be treated... I told my son-in-law, bless his heart, I said, I'd just take you out and i spend the rest of my days in prison, amen, but we'll solve this problem. Yeah. Amen, I mean, being, I, I, your preacher can get riled. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about them babies, Jairus here was a great father. But what about that little one there? Man who had came in faith to Christ. A man who had been Faithful to his wife. Man had been an example unto his children. Jairus here, he should be regarded as one of the greatest fathers in the Bible, amen, in my opinion. We read down what he said, though, in verses 22 through verse 24. But he came to Jesus because he knew in which his help would come. That's it. Basically, you could say it like this, Romans 3 and 23, all sin had come short of the glory of God. Why did Jairus come? He's a ruler of the synagogue, the leader among the people. No matter your position in this county or no matter your position in this world, no matter if it's the White House or the Poor House, you still got to call on God. Amen. You're not above God, amen. amen. How Jairus came, he came humbly and fell at Jesus' feet. If you come humbly to Jesus, he'll break that heart and restore it to what it should be. He came with a troubled heart. What brought Jairus to Jesus? He's upset over his home. Yep. Wanted his home back together. Can I tell you, God's in the home getting back together business. Amen. I mean, when it seems as all nothing's going to ever go right again, you think it's too late. Can I tell you, God can put everything back together again. Sort of like Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, had a great fall. And it can mean, mm -hmm, you know that. The king's men put them all back together again. God can do that in our lives. Amen? A problem he could not solve, but he knew who could solve the problem. A need of the touch of God upon his loved ones. The greatest thing anyone can do is come to Jesus. Amen? Yes. Jairus here was determined that the great example of the Father's love that he would come to the one that could take care of the problem, and he did. This gets a little bit deeper here than what we're thinking on the surface. But I'm glad God saved me, preacher. I, at one time before I was saved, I couldn't pray for my baby. God couldn't hear my prayer until I got saved by the grace of God. See, I was contrary to, to God's will. And, but when I got saved, God could hear my prayers and my babies would get sick and run high fevers and <clears throat> couldn't hardly make it. You just have to turn over to the Lord and know that God's in control, amen. No matter what, God's in control. Amen. 
But the main thing in life is that you're saved by the grace of God and no matter what happens, you die young or you die old, you'll be together in heaven as a family forevermore, amen? It's a proven fact in today's society that a third of the homes are fatherless. 50% of the children that drop out of school, 50% of the girls are pregnant before they're 18 years old in today's society, preacher. Them some bad statistics. But God can put the home back together. Some biblical examples here of praying fathers. And I think about Noah winning his family. And think about Abraham and Job. Job lost it all. You want sorrow? You go to the book of Job. You can find a message in there about sorrow. Amen. Lost everything you have. God give it all back to him. You know what happened? He got his mind off himself and got his mind on his friends. And all that suffering Job went through, he'd done it in a year's time. What about old Joshua over there? latter part of the book of Joshua, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You've got to determine that, amen, in your home. Me and you're the leader of your home. You're the spiritual leader, and God wants you to be uh, a, an example to your family. Jairus faced the greatest test of a father's faith. Verse number 37. And he suffered no man to follow him, Say Peter, James, John, the brother of James. And he came into the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the turmoil and they that wept wailing greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, What make you ado? And weep. The damsel's not dead. She sleep. That same crowd, it was over here in verse number uh, 17, it asked him to leave town after he'd done what he'd done to the man that had a mental instability It needed God walking around in the tombs, cutting himself. God done delivered him from all of that. And that crowd says, leave town. Seems to me like that same crowd over here is wailing and weeping and crying over the damsel. And he said, don't worry about it, she's asleep. You need me for page two. Verse number 40. He said, and they laughed him to scorn. I wouldn't be laughing about what God does. But when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was laying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Telekumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Now notice what's beginning to happen here. And I even hit half of this right here tonight. God help me. But we're going to go backwards just a minute because we've got to bring this together. That you got a man that's separated from his family in the first part of chapter number five. And they don't know where daddy is. And daddy's out there cutting himself in the tombs and running around naked out there. He need one of them gowns, preacher. Yeah. Amen. But if you notice, I missed a part when I read this scripture here and I done it for a reason. I want to go back and pick it up now. In verse number 24, And Jesus went he, uh, with him, and much people followed him and, thr and thrown him. That means they're bumping against him. That means the crowd's big. That means it can't hard to get through. But notice what happens in this verse of Scripture. you got a nobody, you got a somebody, and you got a everybody. The nobody was the woman that was sick. Y'all know this story, it's no, nothing new. There's somebody, she was worth Christ taking time out of his busy schedule to go raise the dead to stop for that one in need. Can I tell you, God ain't never too busy for you. Amen. He'll be right there for you, amen. But everybody, her story helps Jerry. It's been such a blessing. Let me go on into the scripture here tonight. I want to help you. If you've got a pen, you mark this down if you need to. And I read it again today. 
And I think it's spot on. See verse number 25. And a certain woman which had the issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things and many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, she came into the press and be, behind and touched his garment. And for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. He said straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And notice what happens next in verse number 30. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, opened him or turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thrown in thee. See thou who touched me. And he looked around and about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman feared and trembled knowing what was done in her, and came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Now let me show you something. Verse number 25, Matthew chapter 5, says she's had the issue of blood 12 years. Now look down in verse number 42, and it says, Straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was the age of 12 years. And they had astonished with great astonishment. Now why in the world would this right here be in the scripture in verses number 25 that she had the issue of blood for 12 years and then the daughter that was, it was died that was raised from the dead in verse number 42 she's 12 years. Ain't that amazing? I think God's fixing to put the family back together again. Amen. Yeah. You know what it says over in the latter part? He said, and, it said, and he charged them straightway that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Been a while. Amen. The Levitical law in the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, still under the law. Then the law, Christ hadn't died at this time. Amen. According to the Levitical law in chapter number 15 the book of Leviticus in verse number 25 with the issue of blood that was upon that woman she could not be in the crowd of people because they thought it was contagious. Now I'm just speculating. This is traceology. You take it for what it's worth. I believe the Bible, amen. But here's a man that's just got right with God wants to go see his family wants to go with the Lord, and the Lord said, go see your family. When you get right with God, you won't go tell your loved ones. Uh -huh. I try to put it on Channel 12 News. My wife wouldn't let me, and that's the truth of my hand up, preacher. That's the truth, brother. When I got saved by the grace of God, I went home and wanted to call Channel 12 News, and she wouldn't let me. <laughs> that's the truth. So I called all my loved ones. You know that story. But here's a, a man that loved his baby. And I'm sure he's taking care of that baby and doing the best he can with that mama ain't in the scene. Can I tell you, God still puts families back together again. Yeah. To me, that looks to me like here's a woman that had a child that had the issue of blood and she couldn't be in, the, uh, in, in that uh, tribe or in that uh, in, in Jewish custom. Now, she couldn't be in there because the, the Levitical law would keep her out. She's over there with... Uh, all those that's got leprosy. She's an outcast. You well, see, God went on business for taking care of those that are sick and afflicted. Yes, he did. And while He took care of the girl, He didn't forget mother and He took time out to say, your face made you whole, baby. Yeah. Now you go see your daughter. He said over in the Scripture, He said this. He said He took a mama and He took a daddy 
And they went in. You know why Peter, James, and John, and brother James was all in there? They needed some encouragement too. And they needed to know what the Lord had done. And he put all that together so they could get out and tell it. I wonder why that's in the book of Mark. Uh Dr. Luke told it. Amen. If a physician can tell it, it should be pretty much true coming from a doctor. Amen. Amen. But God is in the business of putting families back together. A daughter of one of the greatest fathers that's ever lived. Jared, he wanted his young'un to be okay. He prayed about it, went to see the Lord about it. Then he stopped and took care of the woman. And I believe she was the mama of that baby. Now, brother, I might be graveyard wrong. Lord, forgive me if I am. I don't believe this is by accident. I mean, when I seen this, I just come unglued. I couldn't help myself. I mean, you, you, when you use the bedroom and the, and the mattress for a trampoline, you're done having a fit. <laughs> I mean, glory to God. It's all together. Ain't you glad God works in putting things back together? Yes. It ain't forever mamas and daddies can't get right. This fellow one time, his wife ran off and left him unfaithful to him. She called the preacher and said, said preacher, said, and I got right with God. Went to an old-fashioned church, went to a fashion revival. And I want to restore our marriage. But will you call my husband for me? He said, I will. And he called that man up and started to talk to him a little bit and said, said, what about your wife? Said, she left me, preacher. He said, but I love her. I just can't help it. He said, she probably never be back. will not have nothing to do with me. He said, Johnny, he said, you better sit down. He said, I just talked to her. She wants to come home. Hey. Hey. God can put it together. See, God instituted the family first. And then the government, and then the church. God still works in the families of people. When families get right, homes get right, the church gets right, the church gets revived, more people comes in, knocking on doors still works, hey amen. Yes. That ain't much of a message for a Tuesday night revival service. But I don't know what it done for you, but it sure helped me, hey amen. Yes. To help somebody. There's no place like home. But I'm thinking about that heavenly home where my grandmother went to not that long ago. But what a sweet consolation we have in the Word of God. And we can go home with each other. I just blew my outline all to pieces and took the Scripture and just went through the Scripture with you tonight. Just went through the Scripture. If you'll come back tomorrow night, I promise we'll change gears. Sometimes you got to just get down where people live. That's it. And you got to be a realist. And, and my wife kills me for you. You're too much of a realist, honey. You tell it like it is. But listen, we're fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And I love individuality, and we're all different, but we're all in the body of Christ. And sometimes when you get right down where the rubber meets the road, it just makes you realize, don't give up on God. Don't give up on your loved ones. Don't give up on each other. God's still in the saving business. Now, I grant, I, I grant you not a lot of people getting saved this day and time. I believe this thing's winding down, brother, and we're getting ready to leave here. Amen. I really believe that. I, I mean, it could come tonight. Guess what? If I don't see you tomorrow night, I'll see you over there. Amen. Amen. I know where you're going to find me. <laughs> I'll be waiting by the river. You ain't going to be needing nobody to help you across it because I'm going to be walking on top of it. I mean, me and Peter got a good thing going, amen. Yeah. <laughs> just look up on his face. And just know that 
than all the trouble this world has. I mean, things are upside down. Things are chaotic. People's gone plumb loopy. I mean, they're crazy as a bed bug, amen, in Florida. Not because y'all are going to Florida, but be careful. Things can happen. Families can be torn all to pieces. But God can put things back together. Amen. Amen. That's the message for tonight, brother. You come back to the pulpit and we'll turn the service back over to you, dear brother. Come on, brother. God bless your heart, brother. I'll tell you what, that was... Have you, I've never thought about that in my life. I don't know about cartwheels, but brother, I'll tell you right now, I believe I could do a wagon wheel. <laughs> But tonight, what a message. What a messenger. I'll tell you, tonight God is in the home building business. He can do that. We can, I've built houses, biggest part of my life. Well, not build them, I bricked them. <laughs> but uh, for a lot of years. But the thing about it is, you can build a house, but it takes God to make a home. There's a big difference between a house and a home. Let us stand tonight. And as we stand together tonight, with heads bowed all over the room tonight, and I'd love for you to look into your heart tonight and just ask God, is my home like Jerry's home after God went there? My daughter, your daughter, my child, your child is not dead. They're just asleep. We don't want our family asleep in the world we don't want them apart from God. We want them asleep in Jesus. We want them worshiping Him. We want them saved. And tonight, I want you to do this just for me and for yourself. Tonight, Make a commitment in your heart somewhere tomorrow, right now. I want you to pray for somebody that's lost. Somebody right now that you know that's come to mind right now. Somebody that's already come upon your heart that you know that's lost. Would you call them? Make a point to call them. But more than that, call upon God for them. And invite them to church tomorrow night. I know it's a long way from Allegheny down here. It's a, it's a few miles. But it's a longer way to hell tonight. You can't spend eternity because if you could, eternity would be for a little while and it'd be spent and it'd be gone. Eternity is forever. Eternity is forever. Hell is forever as same as heaven is. Get somebody on your mind right now. And let's have a, just a moment of prayer for them. And if you're here tonight and you're lost, you're here tonight and you want to come to this altar, you bring them to this altar before you leave. Tonight, today, is the day of salvation. Heavenly Father, and Almighty God, as the ones come to mind, come to heart. Come to the surface. Lord, we're going home one day. We're leaving this world. 
there's coming a day, there's coming a time of departure. We that are saved are going to our eternal home. It's a place of rest. It's a place of peace. Not only the peace of God, but it's a peace with God. But Lord, those that are lost, it's eternal separation from God and peace. But Lord, tonight, God, we thank you for the wonderful message where God put the home together. God brought dad, wife, mother, and child. Lord, what a pitiful thing it would be if we'd walk through heaven's gates and could know and could realize one of our children was missing. But Lord, you tell us in your word at that point, Lord, there's going to be a time when all thing, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Lord, our children will be erased from our mind. But, oh God, God, those that we could have witnessed to, oh Lord, when they point that finger and say, I met you day by day, Oh, God, but you never mentioned him to me. Oh, God, who will point their finger at me? And Lord, saying today I'm going to die lost without God because you never mentioned him to me. Oh, Lord, help us be a soul winner. Help us, O oh God, to lead someone to the cross of victory, to the cross of peace, to the cross of eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you for love and peace. But thank you for the grace of God and the blood that flowed, Lord, from Calvary's fountain that saves you. While there's time, if we'll just call upon him. Lord, let us be a mouthpiece for victory. Save us, Lord. Help us to be a soul winner for the glory of God, bearing fruit. And God, we can bear much fruit if we'll just try. Thank you, Lord, for ever blessing in Christ's name. Amen.